Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the maker of the amendment stand for a brief interrogation? Sir, he has indicated that he will so stand. Representative Hefley, uh, Representative Diamond will be uh, asking some questions. You may proceed, sir. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just to refresh everyone's memory, uh, the, the amendment before us would require university employees who deal with 17-year-old students in their classroom to obtain these background checks. Is that correct? Yes. Is there, Mr. Speaker, is there any occasion you were familiar with where someone who is under 17 would attend and partake in regular college courses? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Could someone as young as 15 sit in one of those regular college classes? Yes, if they would qualify, they could be as young as 15, correct. Uh, Mr. Speaker, is there anything in Pennsylvania law that says that a college student who is younger than the age of 18, uh, we call it a matriculate, they've matriculated and become a college student. Is there anything in Pennsylvania law that you're aware of that we treat them as have attaining the age of majority? Federal law, Federal law but not state law. Federal law treats them as, as not being minors? Emancipated, Emancipated minor. Emancipated minors. Okay, uh, on the amendment, Mr. Speaker? Yes, sir, you may proceed. On the amendment, sir. Mr. Speaker, this, this, this body has gone to great lengths to protect minors. Uh, from those predators who would seek to target them for abuse. Yesterday we heard from the, uh, my friend, the gentleman from State College, saying that this would be an undue burden and expense on universities. However, I do want to clarify that a matric a matriculated 17-year-old, if they are preyed upon, sexually abused, that is no less a heinous crime to me than a 12-year-old who is preyed upon and abused at a football camp. And for predators, the instance of first contact is really one of the keys. Um, a predator, in an authority position who a young person trusts, uh, th that creates a vulnerable situation. We've gone to great lengths to, pr to protect kids. I think we can argue back and forth whether we went too far or not, but it was not an impractical or too expensive solution when we talked about our scout leaders having to spend, I believe it was $43 for these background checks. We did not say it was impractical or too expensive for our volunteers at churches to have to get these background checks. We did not say it was too impractical or expensive for a daycare worker who earns about $11 an hour to get these background checks. I don't see how we can say that it's too impractical or expensive for a college professor who earns a six-figure salary to not go through the same background checks. I see the difference between someone who's going to college and who is 17 and who is not yet 18. However, we don't allow those college students to buy lottery tickets. We don't allow those 17-year-old college students to register to vote. We don't allow those 17-year-old college students to go into a convenience store and buy a pack of cigarettes. They are still minor children under Pennsylvania law. 
And again, I don't think that having a 17-year-old being uh, preyed upon and sexually abused is any less offensive than a 12-year-old at a football camp. For that reason, Mr. Speaker, I believe we should approve this amendment. It really comes down to this. We either care about minor children or we don't. We either are in the business of protecting minor children or we are not. I believe this body has said we are, and for that reason, I support the Hefley Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.